Hey guys, what's up? This is Val Cameron from Gym Light. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to captivate with light and darkness. And I'm going to talk about three keys. So let's dive straight into it. What you see here is one of my upcoming sets, uh, which is called Lightbox Ground Gear Room 2, coming soon. Now, the first key is to show less right i mean you can quickly destroy a render by showing everything so let me just add a quick light that will destroy everything so i'm gonna put it here from the front just straight up ahead wide 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 put some power on it i'm pausing in between because you don't need to see everything here right and we'll just turn off all the other lights and the thing is, like I said, you can quickly destroy a render by showing everything. By showing everything, you're kind of losing the mark a little bit, right? We can exaggerate this a little bit more even, so that we really show how it looks when we are just showing everything. Here we go. So. So the first thing that happens when we show everything is that we see everything, all right? Contrast goes away, all right? Plus, we kind of start to see everything evenly, so there's nothing standing out, there's nothing being hidden, all right? Plus, there is one additional very often missed thing that happens when you illuminate everything. And that it's, it's kind of difficult to control a single light that goes everywhere, right? Because it will very often generate errors. For instance, it's very bright here, uh, it's very dark here, right? It's very hard to control a single light. It would just go off and fire off everywhere. So in a sense, it's easier to use multiple lights for that, right? Because you can then control them. So number one is to show less. So, for instance, how can we do that right here, right? Well, if I grab the light, you can see the lights view here on the right side. You go for spotlight and let's just use hidden line and just go a little bit closer. And we start off to kind of break off a little bit and zoom in a little bit. Right, so we zoom in on the light, we minimize how much the light sees, angle it a little bit, and of course, lower its intensity. It's way overblown right now, right? So, as an example, we can go a little bit more intense here. So, as an example, just by showing less right now, immediately it looks more captivating. Of course, we have some issues, and here comes the thing. It's, it's, you know, it's a way of placing lights, so they add to your image and don't create issues, right? So it's an art where you place the lights, and you gotta carefully position them and make them do their thing, and when that light looks good, let it be. Don't let it do more job right let it finish it off that light is done go to the next one add another light split up the job the light does don't overdo it don't let the light do everything that's the you know by showing less you have to adopt to actually working with multiple lights so that they can contribute and build up your, your image all right so number two is that you want to keep it mysterious with the angles which means camera angle right and light angles and where you put the light and shadows that will differ tremendously you can use this set in various ways for instance you can put the light behind her like so right and immediately that has a different type of effect it kind of illuminates the area behind her and makes her stand out as a silhouette right see so you can really play really you know go nuts and create really cool looking stuff 
just by moving the light to a different position or different angle. In this case, we didn't even move the light so much. We just shifted it slightly so it goes behind her. All right. Now, let me undo that. Let's get back to a normal position. We just had the light a few seconds ago. There we go. Now I'm going to clone this light. All right. Clone, copy the settings. So I have two lights that are similar or exactly the same in this case. And I'm going to grab the other one. And now we can break off. And the very cool thing I often use is to move, you know, have the light slightly, uh, let's say here, it's limited to 60 degree angle. So it doesn't see the whole set, so to speak, right? So by having the light slightly more narrow, you have more freedom to move the copy to a different location, just sidewise, and immediately splash it onto a different you know, area. And because they are limited, you can even limit them more, like 45, for instance, or even less than that, 30. So you limit how, you know, how much the light sees of the scene, so to speak. And with that, you're creating tension and mystery and all that, right? And by all means, play with the angles. I mean, I have here different camera angles, right? And by the way, as you switch camera angles, you notice that, for instance, here, that metal thing doesn't shine that overly much. Sometimes you have to reduce the power of lights because sometimes, you know, the, the kind of surfaces around your character start to glow too much in this case it's metal right and you don't want that right you don't want that to shine too much but sometimes what you also can do here is narrow it down a little bit with the spread angle so you're showing less of the scene now as you're showing less with the you know more narrow spread angle all the power of the light goes into that smaller cone so lights naturally if i kind of do 10 on this, it's going to be three times more intense, right? Because it has the same power on a smaller cone. All right. But you know, as I shift to the second camera here, that now becomes more dominant. It starts to glow because it has a different angle, right? So angles are not just about, you know, where the light goes. It's also how the light bounces off. And does it come back to the camera, right? And now number three, my favorite. You know, I always say follow, when you're starting out, follow the rules. Learn the, the rules, right? How to make art. And then once you become a bit more confident, you can break the rules with confidence. There's a difference, right? You know, for instance here, I break the rules immediately here by just, uh, you know, having her look away uh, to the right. Normally, when a person is on the right side of the image, you want them to look to the left where there is more space, right? But here she's looking to the right. So I'm making the image a little bit more mysterious. I'm also having attention on the background. Not so much, right? I'm not yeah, like doing 200 here to just splash the intensity on, on that area but I ha I'm having some attention on the background to make it a little bit more mysterious. So I'm breaking the rules, I'm making it a little bit more captivating on purpose to not just, you know, be pretty and tidy and perfect. It's slightly imperfect in that sense, all right? So going back to the original setup here, um, just put the lights back. This first key light has an actual filter in front of it. So if I look through that light and use, for instance, texture shaded, you can see there is a filter right in front of it. It's a little bit dark, so it's hardly visible, but it's there, right? And that pattern is a plane parented to the light called light filter. It has a texture that looks like this here. It's a very cool, very simple texture. You can actually do these easily on, on yourself, right? It's very, very easy. Just a few stripes and put them on a, on a, on a texture and an opacity channel. Uh, that on its own, it's a cool way to captivate just by, you know, playing with shadows. And you can rotate this, right? You can go ahead and go, for instance, 
uh, rotate. I can also switch here, tools, rotate. And you can actually rotate, you can hardly see that, right? But it's rotating this thing here. And by that, you're dictating and placing the shadows exactly where you want them. So you have full precision here uh, of where the shadows go. So I, I use that on purpose to place, you know, have light in her face, put shadows on uh, other elements and so forth, right? And then I add a filler, which is very soft and gentle. I also have a top back light to accent her a little bit, the hair and shoulders, and put some light here at the bottom. And then I have a floor bounce from the very bottom, just to ease the image from below a little bit. And all those parts contribute to a more captivating effect. And as a small bonus, play with black and white, right? I mean, when you're here in Daz, you have this tone mapping section, which is awesome. And you can just say, well, I want to go black and white, right? By the way, you can go negative, which is really cool, right? Um, black and white, you can burn the highlights if you want them to be more intense, all right? And crush the blacks for a more dramatic look, so it's really, really dark in the shadows, or vice versa, all right? It's very easy. So you don't even have to go into Photoshop. You can stay right inside here on um, Dash Studio and really play with these cool effects. So you can add vignetting to frame your image and further kind of darken the edges, if you will. That would be pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. There is more in our Dream My 3D store. Just newly opened and we have a cool video tutorial section with our membership clubs. So go ahead and check that out. There's a lot more other cool stuff in our store, including freebies and all that. Link below in the description. Guys, have fun with your art. Again, thanks so much for watching. Have fun. See you soon again.